Hi, welcome back to penetration testing course. In today's session, we'll try to discuss the uh, scanning phase of penetration test. That is the second phase of penetration test. So in this, we are going to talk about the uh, the F ping pings and the uh, F ping which are used for sweep the pings. And another one is the N map for the port scanning and service detections. So let's uh, start with the beginning of the information that in once the step one, that means in the reconnaissance phase, uh, the first part of your reconnaissance phase, uh, once it is completed, then you should have a solid understanding of the target and a detailed collection of gathered information. So uh, these data mainly included our collection of internet protocols, uh, that is your IP addresses, and uh, uh, you just uh, recall that. So one of the final uh, steps in the reconnaissance was to create a list of IP addresses that both uh, belong to the target and that was, uh, you know, uh, we were authorized to attack. So this list is the key to uh, the transitioning from your reconnaissance phase to your scanning phase. So in reconnaissance phase, we mapped our gathered information uh, to the attackable IP addresses. So in the scanning phase, we will map these IP addresses to check open ports and their uh, related services that we'll uh, you know, try to discuss. So it is uh, important to understand that uh, it is the job of most networks to allow at least some communication to flow into and out of their borders. So networks that exist in complete isolation with no internet connection and no services like email or web traffic are very rare today. So each service uh, connection or route to another network provides a potential foothold for an attacker. So scanning is the process of identifying live systems and the services that exist on those systems. So there are two steps that we find here. Uh, one, as we said, we mapped our gathered information to the attackable IP addresses. Then we need to check what are the open ports and what are the services associated with those open ports. So we'll shortly discuss what are the different types of open ports are there and what are the different services are there. Okay. So as said, so scanning is the process of identifying the live systems and services that exist on the target systems. So uh, 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 for suppose of our methodology, we will break the scanning phase into four distinct phases. First one is you know, determining if a system is alive with the ping packets or not. That means to check it out whether the target system is reachable or not reachable. Second, once it is uh, reachable, then we try to go for the second phase that is port scanning the system with the nmap so the port scanning means what are the different ports are uh, you know active on the target system whether they are open or closed one means whether they are open or filtered or restricted once you find the port scanning then we try to go for getting some more information that is leveraging the nmap scripting engine which is the further interrogate to the your target to get more information which is power nse which is powerful than your nmap and finally the four in the fourth phase we are going to talk about the scanning the system for vulnerabilities with a nessus tool or many other tools are there so this nessus is a uh, i mean the paid tool it is okay so Later in this uh, scanning phase, we are going to discuss some tools that combine these phases, these four phases into a single process. 
So, however, for the purpose of introducing and learning new materials, it is best to cover them separately. So, in uh, uh, in the determining of a system, whether it is live or not, in that process of determining whether a target system is turned on and capable of communicating or interacting, uh, you know, with our mission. So, in the first step, uh, the the first step is the least reliable, and we should always continue with port scanning the system with the nmap and then leveraging the nmap scripting engine to further interrogate the target and uh, uh, scanning the you know system for the vulnerabilities regardless of the outcome of your whether the system is live or not whether it is reachable or not so no matter the findings it is uh, still important to conduct uh, uh, this uh, the the first step uh, of your scanning and make note of any machines that respond as alive or not so to be fair as you progress in your skills you will probably combine uh, the uh, step one and step two into a single uh, scan directly from your nmap so since uh, uh, this particular session is uh, concentrates on the basics. We will cover the uh, step one as a standard alone process in the scanning port. So in step 2.2 2, uh, is the uh, process of identify the specific ports and services running a particular host. So simply uh, defined the ports provide a way or location for software, services, and networks to communicate with the hardware like a computer. Hardware like a computer. So, uh, yeah, so. Uh, a port is a data connection that allows a computer to exchange information with other computer or other software or other devices. So prior to the interconnection of computers and networks, uh, information <coughs> uh, was passed between the machines through the use of physical media like floppy drives, Right. So once computers were connected to a network, they needed an efficient means for communicating with each other. So ports were the answer for that. So the use of multiple ports allowing, allows for simultaneous communication without the need to wait. So to further clarify this point for those of you who are unfamiliar with ports and computers, it may be helpful to consider the uh, some of the uh, one analogy like uh, think of your computer as a house and there are many different ways that a person can enter the house. Each of the different ways to enter your house is like a computer port. So just like a port on a computer, all the entryways allow traffic to flow into and out of your home. So imagine a house with unique numbers over each of the potential entry points. Most people will use the front door. However, the owners may come in through the garage door also. So sometimes people enter the house from a back door or uh, you know sliding glass door of the deck. So an unconventional person may climb, uh, climb through a window or attempt to squeeze through the doggy door. So regardless of how you get into your house, 
each of these example corresponds nicely with the analogy of computers and their ports so you just recall that ports are like gateways to our, your computer so some ports are more common and receive lots of traffic just like your front door other ports are more obscure and rarely used uh, you know by humans like uh, the doggy door right so this is the 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 main part of your port uh, port of your computer service so regard uh, as said the many common network devices uh, um, which runs the network services uh, on standard port numbers and can give attackers an indication as to the function of the target system so we'll try to uh, discuss these uh, different port numbers and uh, the services okay so let me quickly uh, get into that uh, to show you some of the uh, you know port numbers just quickly get into the and we'll discuss this again yeah so you might have heard the some of the port numbers like uh, port number 20 The port number 20, 21, 22, 23. So something like that, you know, you can find number of port numbers and what are their services. So that will we'll, we'll try to discuss these uh, services also. So the uh, as said, uh, the the next step of your uh, port scanning is. Uh, you are the, the, the nmap scanning we say so that is uh, <clears throat> so before getting to this it is obviously that uh, uh, in the port scanning yeah so there are many more ports and services are there that we will discuss but however uh, some of the ports like you know port number 20 21 22 23 uh, like you know port number 443 and there are many other port numbers are there we will discuss all those so the uh, 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 the this list uh, serves as a basic introduction to common ports that are utilized by the the organizations today so we will see these services repeatedly uh, as we begin to port scan our targets so we need to pay special attention to the discovery of any open ports on our target systems. So we should make detailed uh, notes and save the output of any tools run in the uh, uh, second phase of your scanning. So in the third phase, in leveraging the nmap uh, or leveraging the uh, the nmap scripting engine. Uh, to further interrogate and verify our earlier findings. Uh, so the NSC is a uh, tremendously powerful and simple tool which extend, extends the power and flexibility of NMAP. So it gives hackers and pen testers uh, the ability to use the pre-scanned or custom scripts. So, which can be used to verify findings, discover new processes and vulnerabilities, and automate many penetration testing techniques. So, the final step in the port scanning, uh, in our scanning method, is the vulnerability scanning part. So, in the vulnerability scanning, uh, is the process of locating and identifying known weaknesses in the services and software running on a target machine. So the discovery of 
non vulnerabilities on a target system can be a bit like winning the lottery or hitting a uh, the the black jock in vegas so it is definitely uh, a win for the pen testers so many systems today can be exploited directly with little or no risk when a machine is discovered to have a non vulnerability right so it is important to mention that there is a difference in the service or uh, sorry severity of various vulnerabilities so some vulnerabilities may present little opportunities for an attacker whereas other will allow you to completely take over and control a machine with a single click of button so we will discuss the various levels of vulnerabilities in more detail later uh, in this uh, uh, lecture but uh, in the past so uh, we 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 had several clients asking me to you know attempt to gain access to uh, 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 some sensitive Uh, server on an internal network so it is obvious in this case that the, the final target is not directly accessible via the internet so whether we are going after some uh, 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 super secret internal machine or simple attempting to gain access to a network so we usually begin by scanning the perimeter devices so before understanding what is the perimeter devices uh, we'll we'll try to understand what type of ip addresses are most important for this scanning phase so we need to understand what are the different types of ip addresses are there and you know how they are useful for scanning the for uh, for scanning the uh, the target machine ports so we'll see there are uh, the address of class of uh, address classes of your ip addresses so there are uh, uh, ip addresses classes are there class a class b class c class d and class e and so and so and there are some default subnet masks are also there so the ip v4 addresses were uh, based on the classes so that is based on from where they were starting so class a address it starts with so the ip addresses having here we are mentioning the four that means out of this four bytes the first byte like 0.0.0.0 the first byte is used for your network address purpose and remaining four bytes are used for your host address purpose host address purpose so that's why this ad class a address is written as your 0.0.0.0 by 8 so 8 bits are used so the minimum net the network the class a network starts at 0.0.0.0 and the maximum networks they can form at 127 why because if all the first byte bits become 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 it is equal to your 127 bits so this class a is designed to support extremely large networks with more than 16 million host addresses so next class a is <clears throat> the next two bytes are used like this is byte 1 byte 2 byte 3 and byte 4 the next two bytes are used for your network address purpose and these two bytes are used for your host address purpose so that means 16 bits will be used for your network address purpose so when you use the 16 bits its range is from 128.0.0.0 use the 16 bits to 191.255.0.0 so this uh class b address is also uh, supports the moderate to your large size networks with approximately 65000 host because if you if you write these hosts like 255 to the power of 255 you will get 
uh, you know, uh, uh, this number of host maximum. Then another class is class C. So where class C 24 bits are used for your uh, network address purpose. That means the first three bytes are used uh, for network address and the last byte is used for your host address purpose. Right? So here, this is designed to support the small networks like local area networks with a maximum of uh, 254 hosts. 254 hosts. So there is also a class D uh, multicast uh, block which consists of 224.0.0.02 your 239.0.0.0 and there is a class E which is uh, uh, IP address which is used for your experimental purpose. So now let us see <clears throat> the, these IP addresses are further categorized into private IP addresses and public IP addresses. Some of the IP addresses are reserved for private IP addresses, means for your small networks. So there are blocks of addresses called private addresses that are used by most organizations to assign IPv4 addresses to uh, the internal host. So the private uh, IPv4 addresses are not unique and can be used by any internal uh, networks. So let us see these private IP addresses blocks which are uh, uh, used for uh, internal use. So that is <clears throat> any series starts with the first byte, okay, it's, uh, is used for your network address purpose. And if that IP address starts with the one zero, means 10, and remaining are 0, 0, 0.0.0.0. 0. That means by using this, it can host up to 255.255.255 .255 number of uh, hosts in the network. So this is one series. This is you call the IP, uh, uh, private IP address of this series. Another is using 12 bits instead of uh, 8 bits, 12 bits. So to, when it used the 12 bits, the IP address series starts with 172.16, 172.16. If any address like 172. suppose 17, that will be a public IP address again. But if it is 172.16, that means it is a private IP address. And another uh, private uh, address blocks, which are reserved for the internal uh, networks are for the LAN purpose is one uh, 16 bits that is 192.168.0.0. So these addresses within the address blocks are not allowed on the internet and must be filtered by the internet routers. So with this I would like to stop the session and in the next session we'll try to discuss the services and port numbers.